And we do not have the uh, verses up there. Something's going on with our verses. So I'll read it to you. Amen. All right. Zechariah chapter 4 verse 6 says these words. Then he answered and spake unto me, saying, This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, saying, Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. Not by might, nor by spirit. Or he says, but of the Lord of hosts. He says, it's going to be by my spirit. Amen. This morning, I want to speak to you on the subject, unless the spirit. Unless the spirit. Let's pray this morning. Father, we thank you for a great day. God, I thank you for the great singing that we have heard this morning. We thank you, God, for the opportunity to be able to give with our tithes and offerings. And be able to fellowship with one another. Be able to smile and love and Lord God, you have just been good to us all morning long. And Father, I just ask you this morning as we open up your word, as it's time for us to receive from you, God, speak to our hearts. God, I pray for the lost, I pray that they'd be saved. And for those that are saved, God, that they would be encouraged, God. They'd be just lifted up this morning, God, to continue to serve and be faithful. And Father, we love you. We thank you for what you're going to do. And we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. There's a song that we used to sing, and it was called, We Can't Have Church Until the Holy Ghost Shows Up. It's just another Sunday go-to meeting until the fire falls from above. He says we can't have church until the Holy One shows up. Well, it also has this passage of Scripture, this uh, phrase that says, All is vain unless the Spirit of the Holy One comes down. All is vain unless the Spirit of the Holy One comes down. Well, we do understand, and we understand here at Westside Baptist Church, unless the Holy Spirit does show up, we ain't going to see nothing. Nobody's going to be saved. The preaching is going to be just in vain if the Holy Spirit doesn't show up. You see, we have to understand that we have to have the Spirit of God in order to do anything. And so here in this passage of Scripture, there's a phrase that I want us to kind of look at. And I want to take two different phrases here in verse 6. And it's the last part here it says. He says, not by might, nor by power. God is saying it's not going to be done by your might and it's not going to be done by your power. So the first thing I want us to see is not by might nor by power. How true it is that we cannot do anything without the Spirit of God. We can't do one single thing here this morning without the help of the Holy Spirit. Did you realize that you can do absolutely nothing without the help of God? Many people today think that they can do what they want to do without God. You can't. You can't sing. You can't give. You can't preach. You can't fellowship without the help of God. You can do absolutely nothing without the Spirit of God. But many people today think that they can. Many churches believe that they can function without the Spirit of God within their service, within their walk with God, within their testimony, within their witnessing. They think that they can do without the Spirit of God. But here in this passage of Scripture, we are reminded it's not by our might, it's not by our power. But many people believe that it's because of their might. It's because of their power. It's because of their great gifts. Have you ever seen somebody that had a great gift of something? Maybe they had a great gift of speaking. Well, I've heard a lot of great preachers that will preach. Man, they were gifted in their speaking, but there was no power. They had great oratory, just great finesse. And man, they could just speak. They used words that just flowed nice and easy. It was listening to your ears just as smooth, but they had no power. You ever seen people that could sing? Man, they could sing the roof off of a building, but there was no power in their singing. You see, we can do what we want to with our own strength, with our own power, but it's going to be of no avail. Because you can do absolutely nothing without the Spirit of God. Boy, wouldn't it be great if our churches would get a hold of that thought and that process of understanding that they can do absolutely nothing without God? See, some of y'all are still maybe on the fence saying, well, I think we can do something without God. Well, let's just see here just for a moment. In Luke chapter 9, 
verse 40. There's a passage of scripture there where a father had a son that was demon possessed. And it says that the father went up to the disciples and asked the disciples if they would cast the demon out of his son. And they come to the disciples and he asked them and the disciples came to that boy and they tried to cast the demon out. And they couldn't. Look what it says in Luke chapter 9 verse 40. He says, I besought thy disciples to cast him out. And then look what it says. And they could not. You see, the disciples was trying to do it in their own strength, within their own power. And they were useless. They were powerless against the demons of hell. They could not cast him out. I'll give you another passage of scripture in John. The gospel according to John chapter 15, verse 5. Look what it says here. In John chapter 15, verse 5. And I'm going to flip over. I'm going to read the whole verse to you. And since we don't have it on, on the overhead, I'm going to... Flip my Bible to it. John chapter 15, verse 5. Look what it says. Jesus says, I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him. The same bringeth forth much fruit. But look what it says, the very next words. Jesus says, For without me, ye can do nothing. You can do absolutely nothing, folks. Jesus himself said, if you are trying to do it in your own strength, you can't do it. You can't live. You can't breathe. You can't talk. You can't think without the help of Almighty God. But so many people today, so many even Christians believe that they can do what they want to do in their own power, their own strength, thinking that they can do it. But God says, you can do nothing without me. Everything that you are today is only because of my help. Amen. Many people today think that they've gotten rich because of their knowledge, their intellect. Oh, I'm so gifted in my knowledge and my intellect that I have become rich. No, you got rich because God allowed you to get rich. He gave you the mind to think. He gave you the talents to make the money in which you've gotten in your bank account. And I say your bank account, but if you're a child of God, it's not yours, it's his. You see, but we've got this concept thinking that we can do anything without God. But God says, you can do nothing. I've always told people, I said, you can do nothing. They said, well, I don't know about that. I can do something. I said, okay, breathe. They go, I said, no, I'm talking about your own air. You've got to make air in order for you to breathe with your own air. You can't make air. Only God makes air. Only God can fill your lungs with oxygen. Only God can do that. You see, you can do absolutely nothing, folks. The Bible tells us that God formed us in Genesis. He says he formed Adam and Eve out of what? Out of the dust of the ground he formed Adam. Out of the river band he formed Eve. But we know that we all are from the dust. We come from Adam. And it says that we are dust. Look at your neighbor this morning and tell them, you know what you are? You're just dirt. You're just dirt. Have you ever seen dirt do anything? You see, without the Spirit of God dwelling within this old dirty body, I can do absolutely nothing. But when the Spirit of God comes in, when the Spirit of God dwells within my life, I can do all things according to of him who lives within me. You see, we have to get to the mind and the understanding that we can do nothing without the help of the Holy Spirit. You see, here in this passage of Scripture, it says that it will not be done by your might and it will not be done by your power. Folks, let me tell you, we are powerless. Just as it was in Luke where the man was sending his boy before the disciples to have the demons cast out, and they could not. Guess what? Without God, we are powerless in this world. Now I'm thinking with our churches all across the world, we are not powerless because we do not have enough money. Can you imagine the kind of money that's being uh, sent to the churches all across the world today? 
Look at how much money that is given to our churches all across the world, but yet our world is dying every day. And we're seeing more sinful people every day on the face of this earth. Why is that? We've got more money than we've ever had before. We've got more money in our churches than we could ever imagine ever before. Could you imagine 50 years ago a church having a budget, every a weekly budget of two to $500,000 or even a million dollar budget every week? Could you imagine 50 years ago a church having that kind of budget? Oh, we've got them today and that's just uh, normal. A lot of our mega churches, that's just a normal weekly budget. Million dollars, that's nothing for them. It's not because we don't have enough money we're powerless. Because we've got the money. Boy, our churches all across the world, we've got the money. We're filthy rich in most churches today. They have money rolling through their ears. But it's not because of a lack of money. But it's also we're not powerless because of the lack of knowledge. There's a church on every corner in Spartanburg. There's a church on every corner in Greenville. Every city you go to, there's a church on every street. You see, it's not a lack of knowledge. You see, every Sunday, people are preaching, people are teaching during the week. We've got Bible studies on Wednesdays. We've got Sunday morning services. We've got a Sunday night services. We've got Monday night services. We've got services almost every day of the week that you can go and listen to the Word of God being preached and taught. It's not because of a lack of knowledge. That we are powerless in this world. You see, we've got more churches than we've ever had in a history of the world. But we are less powerful than we've ever been. It's not because of a lack of knowledge or a lack of money. It's not because of a lack of equipment either. Look at the churches we have. Look at the facilities we have all across, let's say, Spartanburg this morning. Every church that you go across, look at our fine facility we have here on Reedville Road here in Spartanburg. This facility is unbelievable. It's great. I don't know exactly what it's worth, but I'd say it's probably worth at least four and a half, five, five and a half million dollars here in this facility. Just for the land alone would be four and a half, five million dollars, not just the facility, but that's just the land. Well, we've got facilities not just like ours. Ours are small compared to the facilities all across Spartanburg. Man, you look at some of these churches. They've got sanctuaries. That's 10, 15, 20 million dollar sanctuaries. Well, we've got sanctuaries galore. We've got facilities galore. We've got all the equipment we would ever need all across the world in our churches. But still yet, we are the most powerless than we've ever been in the world. See, it's not a lack of money. It's not a lack of knowledge. It's not a lack of equipment. Why we're so powerless in the world. But it's also not a lack of programs. We've got programs running out of our ears in churches. A lot of churches, when I go and preach at their church, they'll have their bulletin. And in their bulletin, they'll have monthly events. And they'll have a whole page of nothing but just activities and things that they're going on. Some kind of seminar or some kind of teaching lesson, and they've got all these different things that you can go through all month long. They fill up their calendars of just activities, activities, activities. We are so filled with activities, we forget that we need the help of Almighty God to do those activities. We become so busy with the things of the world, we kind of forget that we just need to get along with God. And allow God to use us. And allow God to teach us. You see, it's not a lack of activities because, boy, we've got more activities in the churches today than we've ever had. I remember growing up, there wasn't any activities in the church. You know what the activity was? Preaching. Worship. They didn't have all these extracurriculum activities where they go and want to send you down there to lose 100 pounds in a weight loss program in the church and everything else. They didn't have all these activities. You know what they had? They had preaching. They had singing. They had revivals. They had all these different things. 
that they wanted you to come and listen to because they understood that it's by the preaching of the Word of God that people will be changed. It's not through activities. It's not through weight loss programs and how to get out of debt and all these different things we've got going on in our churches. It's through the Holy Spirit of God, and it's through the Word of God that people are changed. You see, it's not a lack of activities. It's not a lack of money. It's not a lack of programs or equipment or a lack of knowledge. We've got all these things. We've got more than we've ever had before. But still yet, we are powerless in a world filled with death. With a world filled of lost people. We are seeing less power within our churches. Where our churches should be seeing more power, we're seeing less power. We're seeing less fire from the pulpit. We're seeing less fire from the church's pulpit and from the church's pews. We're seeing less fire. You see people come on Sunday and they leave on Sunday and they go to their work on Monday and they're the same as they were all week long. There is no fire within our hearts. There's no fire within our minds. There's no fire within our lips. There's no fire within our walking and our talking. You see, we need a fire fall from God Almighty in our churches today. We need, we've been speaking about revival. Let me tell you, we need revival to fall on America because if a revival doesn't come to America, folks, we're doomed and we're destined for hell. But you see, we need a fire fall. You know, I always thought about Niagara Falls. Niagara Falls is a unique and just an extraordinary thing to see. But did you realize that you could stop Niagara Falls? You know, one thing that will keep Niagara Falls from falling is a freeze. You know what will keep you from witnessing to somebody? To become cold. Allow the Holy Spirit not to burn within your heart. When you start having a coldness in your heart for lost people, let me tell you, you're getting a freeze. The freeze will stop you from witnessing. A freeze will stop you from reading your Bible. A freeze will stop you from being a witness at your school. A freeze will stop you from going out and telling your neighbor about Jesus Christ. A freeze will stop you from doing that. You know what we need in our churches today? We need a great defrost. We need God to breathe the Holy Spirit and the fire from heaven to come and to defrost our churches. Because many of our churches today are cold as ever. You ever gone to a church and man, you, you felt warmer lips from a, a mother-in-law than you did in the church. <laughs> I'm telling you right now, I've seen churches where you walked in, all you felt was coldness all around Nobody welcomed you. Nobody smiled at you. Nobody shook your hand. Nobody told you that God loved you. Nobody told you that they loved you. You see, there was a coldness in their heart. There was a coldness in the church. Let me tell you, we need a fire from heaven. We need the Holy Spirit of God to dwell within the hearts of men again, to dwell in the hearts of the church again, and to set us on fire for him. You see, here in Zechariah, it says, not by might, nor by your power this will happen. But then he moves on and he tells us a second thing that I want us to look at. But he does say, he says this will not happen by your might, this will not happen by your power. He says but, in verse 6 he says but by my spirit saith the Lord of hosts. He says this will not be done by your own strength, this will not be done by your own power, but it will be done by my spirit saith the Lord. You know what we need today? We need men and women of God to understand that they can have, do absolutely nothing without him. And they must completely surrender their lives and say, God, whatever you have me to do, I want your Holy Spirit to dwell within me, to lead me, guide me, open up my lips, open up my eyes and ears to see help around me and see people in need so that I can minister what you want me to do. You see, that's what we're going to need in our churches today. When we come to the realization it's not by anything that we can do by our might and our strength, but it's only by the Spirit of God that dwells within us that it'll be done. I can't preach without the help of the Spirit of God. You can't sing without the help of the Spirit of God. You can't worship without the help of the Holy Spirit of God. You can't give without the help of God Almighty. You can't witness without the help of the Holy Spirit. You see, folks, we have to get it in our mind and in our heart. Without Him, we're absolutely nothing. And we can do absolutely nothing. There's a passage of Scripture in the Old Testament 
a great example of how we can do absolutely nothing without the Spirit of God. There was a man in the Old Testament, one of the judges. His name was Samson. Many of us know the story about Samson. Well, at least we know some of the story about Samson. But the Bible tells us in Judges chapter 14, verses 5 down to verse 6. You can flip over there if you would like. But in Judges chapter 5, or chapter 14, verse 5 and 6, there's a story there about Samson. And it says that him and his mom and dad was going to Timnath. And it says in, in verse 5 and verse 6, it says these words, Then went Samson down and his father and his mother to Timnath and came to the vineyards of Timnath. And then it says, And behold, a young lion roared against him. Now look what it says in verse 6. And the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon Samson. And he rent him as he would have rent a kid. And he had nothing in his hand. But he told not his father or his mother what he had done. It says that while they were on their way, it says a lion came up and roared against Samson. Basically, it was coming to attack Samson. And it says that Samson rose up against that lion. And it said the Spirit of God dwelled within Samson. And it said he roared up. And he says he took that lion. I don't know about y'all, but if you ever seen a lion in person, probably don't want to touch one. I remember when I was uh, in college and we were playing for the national championship and we were playing down in University of North Alabama and we were down there and uh, their mascot was a lion and on their campus they had a lion on their campus in the middle of their campus and they had this huge cage and the, the glass on that cage man it looked like it was a foot thick it looked like and I was just hoping it was a foot thick because that was what was standing between me and that line. But we would go up to this line, and it was in this big old cage, and it had glass all around it. And I could walk up, and man, I could be as close as from this speaker to that line. And that little glass thing was just in between us, and that old line come up. His head looked like it was this big. I mean, it was just humongous. Biggest paws I've ever seen. I bet his paws was about that long. Big old claws sticking out of his paws when he'd walk and it presses his power down on his paws. You could see his nails kind of coming out. I was like, boy, I bet that thing would tear you to pieces. Man, and all of a sudden, that lion took his head and reared back and it roared. I tell you right now, that's about the scariest thing I've ever heard. Of. <laughs> You've ever heard a lion roar? It, man, it would make you shake in your boots. The power that comes out of the, the vocals of that lion. But when he roared, his mouth opened up. I was thinking, man, he can fit at least four to five heads of us in, this, in his mouth at one time. His teeth was at least that long up top. I was thinking that would go all the way through my arm with one little tooth of his. And I just imagine, I said, could you imagine getting in a fight with a lion? After seeing that, I was like, there is no way. If I saw a lion coming, I would look and see who's the slowest person, and I would try to push them down because I was going to outrun them. That's the only way I'd ever try to escape and know that I could live, that I could outrun everybody else. I'm telling you right now, there ain't no way I was fighting a lion. But here in this passage of Scripture, it says a lion roared up against Samson. It didn't say he ran. But it says the Spirit of God came mightily in Samson, and it says he rent him like he would a little kid. Well, I don't know about y'all, but, you know, I'm not saying I'm strong or anything, but if a little kid comes up to me, I could whoop a little kid. I could tear up a little kid, couldn't you? Well, I could toss a little kid around. That's what Samson did to that lion. He tossed him around like a little kid. He ripped his jaws open like a little kid. He probably picked him up by the tail and just slung him around, just making fun of him, saying, you should never have roared against me. You see, the Spirit of God coming into Samson, and it says that the Spirit of God dwelled within him, and it roared mightily, and he says he mightily rent him like he would a little kid. 
You see, when the Spirit of God was in Samson, Samson could destroy a mighty lion like he would destroy a little bitty kid. That's how strong Samson was. But it wasn't Samson. You see, the key part of that is it says the Spirit of the Lord came into Samson and he might rent that kid. That, little, that line like a little kid. You see, it was the Spirit of God that did that. How do I know that? Well, if you read on. If you read about Samson, if you go to Judges chapter 16, verse 20, look what it says there. Oh, we know the story about Samson. Samson had a, well, we call it a hot mama. Oh, delight. His parents tried to get him to find somebody else. No, that's who I want. I want her and only her. He wasn't supposed to have her. He went against God's will. He went against God's desire. Says that he was asleep. And she came up to him. Look what it says in Judges chapter 16 verse 20. She came up to him and she said, The Philistines be upon thee, Samson. Now look what it says. And he awoke out of his sleep and said, I will go out. Did you get that? I will go out as at other times before and shake myself. And he wished not that the Lord was departed from him. Samson said, I'm going to go out there and I will defeat them Philistines like I have every time before. Says he woke up, but he didn't realize that the Spirit of God went with him. And he went out there, and look what it says in verse 21. The very next verse, look what it says. But the Philistines took him and put out his eyes and brought him down to Gaza and bound him with fetters of brass, and he did grind in the prison house. You see, Samson thought that he could do it with his own strength, but you see, Samson failed to realize without the Spirit of God, he was just as weak as everybody else. Without the help of Almighty God, that line would have rent him like a little kid. You see, without the help of God, Samson was nothing. Just as you and I, without the help of God, we are nothing. We need the help of God. We need the Spirit of God in everything we do if we're going to do what God has called us to do. You see, we can't do it with our own might, with our own power, but it's only by the Spirit of God. Oh, if we could ever get people to grasp that they can do absolutely nothing without the Spirit of God. Could you imagine what our churches would do? Could you imagine what our church here would do if we would just realize that we can do absolutely nothing without the Spirit of God? Can you imagine what you could do as an individual? Realizing that you need the help of Almighty God. Every day that you wake up, you need to say, God, I need your help. God, I need your strength because without you, God, I can't do it. Boy, over the past several weeks, I've realized that you can do absolutely nothing, folks. You can't help yourself. You can't help those that are in need. It's only by God. I don't care how good of a doctor you have. A doctor can only go so far. Medicine can only help you so much. You see, you can do nothing without God. Without the help of God, you can do absolutely nothing. Let me tell you, my dad was on a ventilator for four and a half weeks. He laid still for four and a half weeks. The same bed, the same position with a tube down his throat for four and a half weeks. He couldn't do nothing. But I know this much. God can do something. When the doctor says you, there's no hope. When the doctor says he's not going to make it. When the doctor says... I don't think he's going to be able to do it. If he comes, if we have to put it back on the ventilator, I don't think he's going to make it the second time on the ventilator. Well, the good news is he went on the third time on the ventilator and he still come on. You see, it's not by our might, folks. It's not by our power. It's only by the Spirit of God. That's how we're able to see God do great things. 
When we realize that if we have the Spirit of God within us, we can do anything. But without it, we can do nothing. I don't know what you're facing today. I don't know what your need is. I don't know what you're wanting God to do. But I can tell you this much. If you will just give it over to God and allow God's Spirit to dwell within you and to use you, He'll take care of it. Just get it out of your hands. Try using the Spirit of God instead of trying to use your power and your might. Let me tell you, your power and your might, it ain't going to work. I'll go ahead and tell you, it will not work. You have to allow the Spirit of God. I don't know what God is going to do with our church, but I do believe God's doing something great. I know my dad for 30 some years here, and he's giving it over. He says, God, if you're going to grow the church, you're going to do it. Now, I'm not going to do it in my own strength, my own power, but it's got to be done by the Spirit of God. God will do that if that's what he desires. Whatever God has in, for our, in store for our church, whatever it is, it's going to be something great. Why? Because we've given our hands up. We're just saying, God, whatever your will is. God, we can't do it on our own. We can't do it. If we're going to make an impact of our community. It's only by the help of Almighty God. Whatever it is in your life that you may be struggling with, you may try to have done it with your own strength and your own power. You failed and failed and failed. Let me tell you, give it over to God. Give it to Him. Allow Him to take it. And let me tell you, it'll work. It'll work if you'll just give it to Him. So here in this passage of Scripture, God is saying it's not going to be done by your power, not going to be done by your mind, but it will be done by my Spirit. Say it, the Lord of hosts. Believe, folks. Believe. Allow the Spirit of God to use you and move. Just keep your faith in Him. Let me tell you, God will come through. No matter what you're facing, you'll come to realize it's only by Him. By His might, by His strength. Nothing else. I keep telling people every day that I talk about my dad's journey for the past seven and a half weeks, eight weeks now. I said, you know, I'm thankful for the doctors. I'm thankful for all the nurses. They helped him tremendously. But I said, you know what? Without God, he would not be here. Without the help of God. I said, the nurses, the doctors, medicine can only go so far, folks. God had to come through. Without him, he would not be here today. And I can say the same thing for you. Without God's mercy, God's love for you, you wouldn't be here today either. God's giving you another chance. God's giving you another day to live. God's giving you another opportunity to serve him. Why don't you serve him? Why don't you allow the Holy Spirit to use you and dwell within your life? We need to get back. Just as Samson was. Allowing the Holy Spirit to dwell within him. Boy, he was mighty. He was able to do great things. But when he didn't allow the Spirit to dwell, he was defeated. Would you please stand with me this morning? As God has spoke to our hearts, as God has showed us this morning about our power and our might, the Spirit of God. Maybe you're here. And maybe you're saying, Spank, you know, I've been going through some things. And to be honest with you, I've tried to do it on my own. And I failed. I messed things up. Maybe it with maybe it's with a family member. Maybe it's with your mate. Whatever it is. Maybe it's with your kids. You've tried to do it in your own strength, in your own might. You fail every time. Well, let me tell you, you're going to fail if you do it in your own strength. 
Why don't you ask the Holy Spirit to use you? Why don't you ask the Holy Spirit to show you what you need to do? And allow the Holy Spirit to do it. Will you do that this morning? Maybe you're here. Maybe you've never been saved. Let me tell you, there's no greater day to give your life to Christ than today. There's no greater day to say yes to Jesus than today. Why? Because tomorrow's not guaranteed. You're only here for today. Tomorrow's not promised. But if you're here today, you've got an opportunity to give your life to Him. If you're not saved, my prayer for you this morning is that you'd be saved. That you'd cry out and ask Christ to save you. Will you do that today? The most simplest thing for you to do is to be saved. Believe and confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ was raised from dead, so you shall be saved. That's as simple as it gets, folks. But many will die and spend eternity in hell because they will not do the most simplest thing, and that's just receive Jesus as their Lord and Savior. Confess him before others. Just tell people, I believe in Jesus. I trust him as my Savior. Will you come this morning as the music's playing, as God has spoke to your heart? Will you come today? Will you come? Maybe you've got some things you're dealing with. Just give it over to God. Just give it to Him. Will you do that? Just give it to Him. Be obedient. Be obedient. You'd like someone to pray with you? Just come down on the altar, raise your hand up, and I'd like for somebody to pray. I'll get somebody to come to you. Whatever God's wanting you to do this morning, just be obedient. Just be obedient. You ever given your life to Christ? You ever been saved? step out in that. You don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Whatever God's wanting you to do, just be obedient. sure is good to you. He's good to us. No, I don't deserve anything that he has done for me, but I sure am thankful. I sure am thankful.
ask you to pray for these that's on the pew or on the altar this morning. Whatever their need, just ask God to meet their need. Bring the strong folks. Talked with uh, several this week that's going through some hard times. God will bring a stronghold in, in that situation. I've got a, two young uh, uh, young boy and girl, I call them young, they're early 20s, but uh, their mother and their dad passed away about three, four years ago, and their mother is uh, on the ventilator in the hospital this past week, so they're facing that. Uh, I called and prayed with them. Told him, I said, you just don't give up. You just keep believing and asking God to use you. Uh, use these doctors. Show them what they need to do. Uh, she come back a couple of days later. Great report. Mom was doing better. You all know, pray for that family. Pray that, uh, that their mom would be healed. And that's the only family member they have left. Their mother. So uh, I'm just praying for them. They're heartbroken, going through some hard times. A lot of people, folks, are hurting. We'll just open our eyes up and see people around us. God will reveal to you those around you that needs, needs prayer. They just need someone to tell them it's going to be all right. God loves them. This morning, uh, Ricky comes this morning. So I'm going to ask him to come stand up here and and said he'd like to come to join our fellowship, fellowship here at our church. And, uh, and so he felt welcome, felt loved here. And I said, oh, we just lying to you. But, uh, <laughs> but we are thankful that he felt like this is where God wants him. And so uh, we're thankful that God has sent him our way. And uh, y'all pray for him. Pray that God would uh, just use him, whatever it is. His talents, uh, whatever he can do uh, to enhance the kingdom. That's what we want for him. So y'all be praying for him. Don't let up just this week, but pray for him here, here on out. Ask you to put Ricky on your mind and heart. Pray for him daily. And, uh, we know that God's going to use him. We thank, thankful that God has sent you our way. We sure are. Thank you. And, uh, it's a blessing to see you come. And, uh, so y'all just keep praying. We've been asking God to send us people. And just workers and laborers. And, uh, God's doing it. So we thank God for that. He's a good God, ain't he? Amen. He's a good, good God. Man, I'm so thankful that Ricky has come join with us. So uh, I'm going to ask if he'd just hang out down here and y'all can come up and get him fist pounds or whatever. Y'all can hug his neck, whatever y'all want to do. But uh, I'm so thankful that God sent him our way. And so uh, let's uh, go to the Lord in prayer and praise him for that. Give him thanks. I'm going to ask Ron if he'll close us in our prayer this morning. And also, that's another praise there. Ron's foot's healing up. That's a praise and a half there. He's always had problems, though. When he gets a sore or something that doesn't heal as quick. But, man, I'm thankful. He told me that the other week that he had a spot on his foot again. And, and I said, man, so we're going to pray. And I'm so thankful that God touched you and healed you. Good praise. I'm going to ask him to close us out in prayer this morning. Heavenly Father God, we want to thank you this morning. The message we've heard. Pray God you accept it to line it in our hearts, Lord. May we remind you, Lord, for the greatness that you have before us today, Father. Lord, we serve a great God. You are a great God. A great and mighty God. And Father, we do ask you to continue to help our church. Continue to send more people in, Lord, to, to hear the gospel.
Lord, I fellowship and pray God give us some heavy Lord to come in and receive God what we have to offer and use this house here in this place, Lord, and not be too vigilant, Lord, about the uh, coming days, Lord. I do thank you for our people, Lord, and how we love one another, Lord. Lord, uh, our love totally and love to see you can, Lord. You see this nation and every one of us, Lord. Thank you, Father, today that you love us more than we love anything, Lord. We bless you today, Jesus. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. We're dismissed. Love each and every one of you. Looking forward to Wednesday night at 6 o'clock. Be praying. Be expected.